Vantage is one legend who can kind of do it all, but if you are using her abilities poorly or straight up wrong, you're going to be a huge detriment to your squad. A Vantage needs to be a master marksman while also having the movement of a true warrior that at times can compete with the likes of a legend like Valkyrie or Horizon. Vantage does slot herself rightfully so in the recon class, so she can ping those beacons, and one step beyond this, her entire kit of abilities is really all about getting the literal vantage point on the map, so she definitely fits more of an Overwatch type of legend who at times can also use her movement in aggressive ways to really outplay your opponents. Spotter's Lens is an incredible ability and maybe not talked about enough when it does come to Vantage's entire kit. The basics of this ability is that you can aim down sights with any optic greater than two times and get information about your enemies. Also, and similarly to a Sears passive, you can just hold aim down sights with your hands to go into a three times binocular zoom. This information you can see includes the obvious of enemy specific legends, the distance to them, and even the entire team's rarity of shields, plus if they are down a teammate or not. The last one is really important, being able to look at someone quickly and see the entire enemy's shield status and rarity and if they are down a player or not is so good as you can't get that intel to whether or not you need to make an easy wipe on enemies who may be less optimally geared. And to back all of this up, you can also ping the specific legend you are looking at to tell your team their shield rarity and the legend. In addition to the information gathering that you do get with this passive, on any three times or greater optic, including the two to four times and her ultimate, you will get a small blue dot in the middle of your reticule, which will help you track and lead enemies with your shots. This is more or less a bullet indicator as to how much the drop of the shot will be. So the further away the enemy is, the more the bullet drop will be, and thus the blue dot will move down the scope to compensate. A small tip and thing to know is that this information gathering can still happen through smokes, much like I did here in Bunker. I could see the enemy was boxed out and I just shot in the middle of this highlighted area. And then I followed up again with another shot, wiping the squad. It's not a digital threat optic, but it's absolutely useful. My personal favorite part of Vantage, and honestly, probably the best part of her kit is gonna be her tactical echo relocation. This is a bat companion. She can send out up to 40 meters away via a press of her tactical ability, and once she is ready to move, you can hold down your tactical to propel Vantage forward to her bat. This ability has a nice 20 second cooldown, and much like Octane's launch pad, she also gets a double jump once she does get to her bat. There's a few things you absolutely need to know about this ability and how it functions in order to really get it down and not just completely throw your game. For starters, you must have a line of sight on Echo in order to get sent to them. This is evident by the light bluish outline around Echo. If it's a yellow outline, you have a visual sight line on them, but your ability is on cooldown, and if you have a red outline, Echo is out of your sight. One big tip I can give is to understand this one second or so activation timer after you hold the tactical down. You can begin by activating this movement ability from behind cover or inside of a building, and then and hop out right at the end to get launched forward. This will help you stay revealed and hopefully take less damage while the ability is activating. Another huge way you can do this is by jump peeking over objects. This is a very nice way to stay completely revealed and at the last moment you just jump up and you will get sent forward out of your cover. Unlike a crypto drone, Echo will follow Vantage when you are moving around and you will not need to recall them after every single time you do send it out. Echo will stay within 55 meters of Vantage but you will only be able to control them up to 40 meters away. This is kind of nice as you can just send Echo out and more less forget about them till you really got to use them to retreat or make an advance. While it is pretty hard to tell where Echo is, other teams can see Echo and they can see when Echo is moving around. Just be careful if you are leaving Echo out or around in one spot. It's another way for enemies to tell where you are. And if you do send Echo out to a spot where enemies are already lined up on, they are going to beam you pretty easily when you do come out of that tactical. Because of this, I actually recommend you do recall Echo after using them to move at least most of the time so enemies cannot see where you are, relatively speaking. If you do know no one is around, or you do have a supreme spot of safety, you can keep Echo in one spot to push in and then quickly use Echo to escape back to your spot. But this does lead us into the tip of just rapidly sending Echo out and using that tactical more or less instantly. If you are unaware, you can simply look at a spot and just hold the tactical ability down. This will both send Echo out and start activating the tactical, allowing you to get very rapid movement without waiting for Echo to get to the desired location. Echo moves pretty quickly, so by the time the ability does activate, Echo's already gonna be 30 to 40 meters out there and you more or less will get the full effect without having to wait for them to move. This semi combos with my reasoning for always recalling Echo. By doing this, you can quickly just look at a spot, hold the tactile, and then get going rather than waiting for Echo to come up from the behind or from another area, which is quick. But when seconds do matter, this can be a pretty big deal. If you didn't know, you can still send a redirect Echo
Echo while you are on zip lines, but you cannot actually have the tactical activate while you are on the zip line. You can, however, start to activate the ability and simply just jump off the zip line when it is time to activate it for some really creative movement. It's also worth mentioning that more or less you can redirect Echo at any time unless you are not, and this does include healing, firing, or throwing grenades. Since Echo can be sent out up to 40 meters away, this includes both more or less going straight horizontally along the ground or straight up vertically. Vertically is honestly pretty OP when it does come to rapid repositioning or taking high ground areas where horizontally is really great for avoiding unnecessary damage and can be very clutch at times. The double jump at the end of Vantage's launch also allows for complete redirection, which is a nice perk that she does have over the Octane launch pad. This means you can do quick 180s or 90s at the end to get behind cover, and it also means that you don't need to be spot on accurate with Echo's location when you are using the ability since you do have some flexibility from the double jump. If you want to, you can completely avoid the double jump by crouching while moving in the air. If you crouch right before you do get to Echo, Vantage will simply just fall down to the ground. This is also a pretty solid way to keep your momentum up and avoid that brief slowdown when you do get to Echo. The crouch effect is honestly incredibly important to learn as this allows for a whole nother level of transportation and movement, such as crouching right after you do hit the tactile. It seems like you might not want to do this, but hitting the tactile and going straight into the crouch will just give you a nice launch forward, which can be good in fights or to quickly get away while keeping your launch super low. Another huge thing to note with this crouch mechanic is that when using Vantage's tactile, you will not have your guns come back up until your feet do hit the ground. This means if you keep the bat low to the ground or low to where you are going, it's pretty important so you aren't left falling from height with no guns out. You can bypass this short amount of time by waiting for your guns to come out by crouching right before you get to the bat. I also like the crouching right after using method if you are going to take height on an object that is not too far away from you. This will kind of cut your velocity a little bit and let you just get to the height and get moving a little bit faster. Keeping with the theme of escape artistry for Vantage, you can also use the tactile and then crouch right at the end before you do get to Echo, but right as you are crouching, you can go into a slide while popping some healing items. Chaining together some edge slides is also a very powerful way to utilize this movement to your advantage to just get more healing off and just be a lot more mobile than a typical Vantage player. And of course, you can also be extremely creative with Echo by falling off of areas to bait enemies to chase you and then repositioning yourself back up to completely juke them. One thing you will want to learn is how to enhance Vantage in the sense of her name, Vantage, using Echo to relocate to high or get a watchful eye is key, and this is even more so when you do pair in her ultimate ability. However, if you are looking to ever not play with random players, my Discord is always open to finding others to play with. Hop in. You can also chat with myself and the community. Also, hit that like button. I truly appreciate the support. Vintage's ultimate is the Sniper's Mark, and this is probably what she's more publicly known for, even though I do think her tactical is really where she does shine. This ultimate is a sniper rifle that she does get to use with up to five stored shots, with one shot recharging about every 40 seconds. This means you can use this ability pretty frequently, since you do not need to wait for the entire mag to recharge, which also increases its power and utility by quite a bit. Shots from this rifle do 50 damage to the body for 10 seconds, and they will highlight enemies. Note that this is not a scanning ability, so enemies are just highlighted slightly in red. When highlighted, those enemies will take approximately 12 to 13% more damage from all sources and double the amount of damage from Vantage's sniper rifle, so 100 damage per body shot, which actually can add up quite nicely. And if you are hitting someone in the head with Vantage's sniper, it will do 75 damage, and this will be adjusted accordingly by what helmet they have. It's also worth knowing that there is a laser type of sight line that does come from Vantage when she is aiming down sights with this weapon. As soon as you look at someone, they will know you are around and more than likely try to take cover. Try to avoid looking straight at enemies till you are ready to fire. I also find that if you want to get someone away from a spot, you can use this little laser to your advantage by looking at them and having them scatter. While it can be tempting to rip five ultimate shots on an enemy all at once and get them knocked, I often find using this ability in shorter instances of one to two shots to be a little bit more powerful. Tag one enemy, maybe two enemies, and then push in. This will increase your damage from all sources and it will be beneficial to the whole squad and you will have more shots for some future teams. Likewise, with this, the weaponry you are using with Vantage is pretty important and it really comes down to the mode and the playstyle you are looking for. For an aggressive player, starting off with Vantage's ultimate and then comboing in close range weapons such as the typical Volt and Shotgun is absolutely beast mode. If you are playing a little bit slower like in rank, you really should look at running something like an R99 or Volt and then also a Marksman weapon such as a 3030 or maybe even a Longbow Sniper Rifle. The main reason behind this is that if you are stacking a little bit extra range, you can get a tag with Vantage's ultimate and then follow up with some 
boosted damage from those longer range precision weapons. It seems small, but getting hit by a boosted 30-30 with a skull piercer or a longbow with a skull piercer, it can be pretty deadly and you're going to save a lot more ultimate ammo this way. Plus, they're not going to have the laser sight on them, which can be pretty deceiving at times. Really try your best to be very cautious with Vantage's ultimate and don't feel like you have to rip off all those shots at once. Conserve your ammo and it will pay off in big ways. More so than most legends, you will find that ultimate accelerants, especially during the early game, are absolutely sick with Vantage. Popping one of these gives nearly two full shots, which if you do find this off the drop, it's pretty wild. Most people are not expecting to get tapped by this ultimate, plus the bonus damage on already low or weak shielded enemies. It's pretty great. It should be somewhat known by now, but if you already have an ultimate shot, you can go into your inventory to use your ultimate accelerants by clicking on them. The legends you will want to pair with Vantage do not really matter too much, but Vantage does fit a small portion of the recon or scanning type class, but she's also pretty heavily mixed in with an assault legend class in my opinion. I personally would treat Vantage almost more like Horizon than I would say Bloodhound or Seer. One pairing that you may want to look at is going to be Rampart. This way you can get even more boosted damage from those ant walls, and if you do combine it with Vantage's ultimate, you can get some pretty big damage in there with your weapons. You will find that a shot from Vantage's ultimate and then following up with a charged sentinel and Rampart's ant walls will treat you pretty nicely to a huge boost. Of course, if you can't get the Kraber in there as well, a nice body shot after getting a Vantage ultimate hit in there is also going to be pretty deadly. As for where Vantage is going to end up in the meta, this is a tough one to say. I don't think she's a top tier insane rank or anything as her kit does lose a little viability in the end of the game, especially in ranked where oftentimes the ring gets a lot smaller. But for general play of aggressiveness and some team utility, she's absolutely a worthy pick and somewhere in the upper half of Legends in my opinion. You need to check out this video right here though if you want even more ways to accelerate and master your skill in Apex Legends. But as always, happy gaming legends.